All right, let's consider that there's good guys, you know, everybody, and then there's bad guys, the ones that have a plan or actively engaged in trying to do nefarious things like control the world and change the human population and limit the freedoms of people. Okay, I talk about them enough. So let's talk about people, like uh, you and me. You see, there's a, uh, let's lump them into two categories. Okay, and there's the ones that are aware of all of that evil and reject it and are, 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 are staked up and fighting against it or at least saying that there's a line that won't be passed in their presence. And then there's the rest of the mix. And that mix is, let's call them the childlike of mind. The ones that either don't know or don't fully understand or or maybe no and really can't, are, are defeated. They, they don't believe they can do anything about it or it can't be changed or there's no point. Well, those are the childlike of spirit. And I feel that what we should be doing is not so much fighting our opponent, but encouraging the, the meek and the weaker among us to leave that influence. Because the evil guys, they're getting their power from not the guys that are fighting back. Fuck no. Who are they getting it from? They're getting it from the the weak and discouraged masses. The, the heartbroken, the enslaved. Do you get it? Now, if we show those people something that they want more, then they'll just wander off of their their tools and their farmlands and their their <laughs> servitude they'll, and they'll be free like animals like we are remember we're wild animals born to be free so how do we do that well if we look at them as weak in spirit then weak in mind and I don't mean to insult anybody I'm really trying just to be as loving as I can but if we look at those people as weak in spirit and weak in mind then we need to be guiding them encouraging them I'll use an analogy Okay, let us say that that population is a child in a high chair. And so far, they've been told, be afraid, take your medicine, don't look away from the TV, don't leave the room, you can't. Everybody you know that died, died because they didn't listen to us. Everybody you know that's sick is sick because they didn't listen to us. You can, like, right, you know, that, that whole uh, sick, abusive, mind, hypochondriac bullshit. Well, if we go over and go, no, listen to your dad who's been scaring you your whole life. You should be scared of him. That's just going to mess that kid up. Shouldn't we just stand in the next room, feeding ourselves with things that we like and doing the things that we enjoy and playing amongst ourselves and and being terribly happy, and every every moment or two, look back over at that kid in that high chair and go, hey, if you want it, it's here. If if you want some help, just holler, we'll come on over, we'll, we'll help you. But you see now, even if it's out of the corner of your eye, a better way, a way where people don't know that kind of fear and consternation and and you see what I'm saying they can't be taught they have to be curious they have to believe that there's something beyond what they have and they have to want it, it they've only been taught to obey and we don't want to bring those people over to our side just to be more obeyers and some people will always be obeyers some will just give up their will they'll always be on that side. There's some that'll always want to be told what... To, you remember the Eurythmics? Some of them want to use you. Some of them want to be used by you. It's true. So are we going to save the world? No. Because we can't change the nature of man. But we can elevate through maturity and through um, shepherding, through harboring, through nurturing. Like... If all a man is, is the reproduction of man, you know, a child grows old as a child, then we need to develop a 
better way to do that. Protect the child through the whole process. Get the guy living to be older, be more comprehensive along the way. Let me sum up here. Instead of trying to figure out how to destroy the enemy, instead of trying to figure out how to red pill and and wake up and and inform the masses, create heaven and exhibit it. Be who you want to be. Be a shepherd. Be kind. Whatever. I'm not going to tell you how to be. But be that. And be it well. And these people that are confused or trapped or worried or whatever. They'll see a better way demonstrated. And you will have performed the first of your two functions. You'll have shown them that there is a better way. And then when they reach out their hand, yours will be there waiting. Because walking the better path means being prepared to help people. Yes, I want to hurt the bad guys. Yes, I want to shift power in this world and, and fix a lot of problems. But I'm a man. I'm not a god. The best that I can do is give my life to my god and demonstrate that show faith and so what is the answer let me sum it all up for you the answer is in the book of Matthew Jesus was asked what is the greatest in heaven and he presented a child and he said children children are the greatest in heaven be like them protect them don't harm them if you should have something in your life that hurts them remove that of your life if you should have a part of you that denies children God, then remove that part from yourself. To me, that's a lesson on maturing as a, as a child of God. The trick is we're all children. We have to start looking at each other as children. I'm, I'm a child, you're a child. Every, we're all children of God. We don't smite our, our brethren. And we don't force our brethren. No. Those are the wrong ways. Those have been demonstrated. We take care of our temple. And we raise our land and we give our best to God. And the best sacrifice that we can give to God of our crop is to take what grace we have given and give it to those that are without grace. Do you get it? We don't beat this by beating our enemy. We defeat this by being better for each other because we love each other.